Okay, let's talk about securing files and folders in Windows Server. This is actually an essential part of securing a system. We need to secure our data. And the way we do that in a Windows system is with NTFS permissions for our files and folders. Now, obviously, if we're doing uh, securing databases or something like that, we're going to do it in a different way. But when it comes to our file servers, we do it using NTFS permissions. So I've already got a couple of things set up here. So let me show you what I've got. Number one, I have a folder here. I put it on my C drive. I've got a folder called shared. And this is what we're going to share in our next video. We share data to make it available on the network. But before I make it available on the network, I want to secure it. Now, inside this shared folder, I've created two different groups, client, or two different folders, clients and inventory. Clients obviously contain information about clients. Inventory contains information about our current inventory. Now, I'm going to have two different types of users. I'm going to have sales users and production users. My production users should be able to read and write data in my inventory folder. My uh, sales users should be able to read from the inventory folder, but shouldn't be able to modify or change anything. Uh, production users should have no access to our client information whatsoever. But our sales people, they need to have the ability to read and write and make changes and whatever inside the client, uh, client's folder. Okay. With that in mind, I've created some groups inside Active Directory. So I'm going to go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers, and you can see what we've got here. I've created a folder called Groups, and within that folder, I've created four other, these are domain local groups. So Clients Modify, Clients Read, Inventory Modify, Inventory Read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the appropriate permissions to these domain local groups. Now, this is how we typically manage permissions inside uh, in, in, in TFS uh, on an Active Directory network. We'll put our users in global groups. We'll put our global groups into domain local groups, and we'll assign rights to our domain local groups. Now, I tried to create these to be to reflect what the permissions actually will be. So let me start by adding these domain local groups with permissions to everything in our sales folder. So I'm going to start with clients. And so I'm going to right click and go to properties and security. Now, one thing to keep in mind, users by default are going to have permissions. And everybody is going to be a member of the users group. And I don't want that. My production users should not be able to read my client information. Now, you'll notice this is grayed out. It's grayed out because it's an inherited permission. So in order to stop inheritance, I have to do this. I'm going to go to my advanced, and then I am going to disable inheritance. And when I do that, it says, do we want to convert inherited permissions to explicit permissions, or do we want to remove all? You almost always want to convert. And the reason is, included in these permissions are permissions for the system and for the administrators. And if I take that out, then the uh, system and the administrators can't access these files. Okay, so now that I've taken that out, I'm going to, I can do this in one of two places. Let me come back. I'm going to hit apply and okay. I'm going to come back here. And you'll notice now that these are dark, not light gray. So I'm going to edit permissions for my users, and I'm going to uncheck read and execute list folder contents and read. And that's because I don't want domain users to have access to anything. I want to specify. Now, notice I did, I unchecked allow. I did not deny very, very, very rarely are you ever going to want to use deny permissions. <clears throat> There's a few cases where you can but, or where you need to, but as much as possible, you want to avoid it. Remember, security principle, if it's not explicitly allowed, it's implicitly denied. So just by not allowing domain users, they don't get any access to the system. I'm going to go ahead and click apply so you can see if there's any access to these folders. So you'll see now domain users is removed. They have no permissions whatsoever. Now I want to add them in the client folder. So I want to add client read and client modify. So I'm going to click edit and I'm going to add and I'm going to type client underscore modify and then check name. 
Okay, let's do client. Oh, let me just do a client and search for that. It's clients. That's what threw me. Okay, so I'm going to do clients modify. And for clients modify, I want to give them modify permissions. Now, that basically means they can do anything they want to. They can read, they can write, they can delete, they can do whatever they want to. But we're not giving them full control. Full control basically is modify with the ability to assign permissions to other people. We don't want to give anybody else the right to assign permissions. Our admins need to be able to keep that themselves, so we use modify. Now, just to give you a heads up, frequently when you're working in an industry, somebody will say, hey, I need full control of these files. That's normally not what they mean. They mean modify. Or they'll say, I need read and write permissions on the files. Again, that's not what they mean. They mean they want modify. That's just a Windows terminology for what people are normally asking for. Now, I want to go ahead and add clients underscore read. Let me do a check name. And for that, I want to give them read permission. Now, the default here is read and execute, which means they can read. And then if there's a script there or a program there, they can execute that. List folder contents and read. Most of the time when people say, hey, I need to be able to read this, what they mean is I need read and execute permissions. All right, so I'm going to click Apply. And now we have, let me go ahead and click OK and OK. So let me come back in so we can see this. And under my security, I have client read has read permissions, clients modify has modify permissions, users have, well, still special permissions. Let me go ahead and edit that because I don't want them to even have special permissions. Now, actually, in order to edit that, I have to do advanced because it is special permission. So I can click here on users demo and then just remove that. Okay, now let me do the same thing for the inventory folder. Now, when we made changes to the clients folder, we did as much of it as possible using basic permissions here. I want to do this entire one using the advanced permission screens. So I'm going to go to advanced, and just like before, I want to disable inheritance because I want to specify. I don't want, and at the moment, like, our sales users need read permission, so I could just leave that and not worry about it. But that's not best practice because you, they'd be part of users, and users have read permission all automatically. That's not best practices because what happens if I had another type of user? They shouldn't have access. Well, I forget that I left users with read access, so that becomes a problem. All right. So I'm going to disable inheritance, I'm going to convert, and then I'm going to go ahead and remove my user's permissions. And then I'm going to add, and I'm going to select a principal, and I want, this is inventory, inventory underscore read. And for them, I'm going to give read and execute. Now, you'll notice a slightly different screen. I can add conditions, I can show advanced permissions, We'll deal with advanced permissions. Hell, actually, let's go ahead and look at it. I was going to say we'll deal with it later, but let's go ahead and look at it now. So I'm going to do show advanced permissions, and this gives me like 17 basic or 17 permissions. Basic permissions right here are basically just groups of advanced permissions. Most of the time, you can do what you need using basic permissions, which, by the way, are available here and in that previous screen where we did it on the clients folder. But if I need to get really funky, then I can do something with uh, advanced permissions. Okay, so I've got my inventory read with read permission, so I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more and select principal. I'm going to do inventory underscore modify, check name, and I want to give them modify permission. And notice when I did that, by the way, that also checked write permissions because write permissions are included in modify. In fact, if you want to see everything, we can come to show advanced permissions. And this is going to show all of the permissions that they have. Notice the only things that are missing, they can't take ownership, they can't take permission, and they can't delete subfolders and files. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and apply and okay so now that has set permissions on my clients in my inventory folder and because i took out the users then it's 
clients and they only have the permissions that I specifically assigned. The only thing that's inherited is for the operating system and for the administrators, which is fine. Okay. Now, remember we said we have local groups and or domain local groups, and that's what we give permissions to, and that's what these are. And then we have global groups, and global groups aggregate users. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two more global groups. Right-click, New, and I'm going to do a – there's my group. And I'm going to create a group for sales users. Let me go ahead and do sales users just to make this clear. And for this, I want a global group. And then I'm going to take create a new group for production users. Production underscore users. Okay. Now, when I create user, when I hire a salesperson, I create a user account. I put them in sales. I want them to get the appropriate permissions. And sales need to be able to modify the client folder and read the inventory folder. So what I'm going to do is go into my sales group, and I'm going to make them a member of, and then I'm going to add clients underscore read. I'm going to do a semicolon there. And inventory. Whoops, I need clients modify. I got that wrong. Modify. And I can never remember if it's semicolon or call, uh, comma. We're just going to go with it. And then inventory. I want them to be able to read the inventory. So I check names. Hey, what do you know? I got it right. It's semicolon. It underlines both of them, puts them in the correct case. Okay, great. We found our clients modifying our inventory read group. So now when I add a user, let me go ahead and apply. When I add a user to the sales group, they'll also be part of clients modify and inventory read, which means they will be able to read the inventory folder and modify the clients folder. Let me go ahead and create another group here. So I'm going to do a new group, and this is going to be for my production users. So my production users, again, it's going to be a domain local group because we're putting users in it. And apparently we have a group that already has that. Oh. That's interesting. Why do I have a production users group? Okay. Oh, I probably hit okay twice. Okay, so I've got a production users group. And for my production users, I want them to be able to modify the inventory but have no access to clients. So I just don't add them to this group. Go to production users, member of, add, inventory, underscore, modify. Check names. If found it, everything's good. Okay, and now I'm ready to start adding users. Users go into groups, they automatically get those permissions. Now, remember best practices. Users go into domain local groups, or global groups. Domain local, I just get this wrong. Let me try this again. Users go into global groups. Global groups go into domain local groups. Local groups have rights. We don't deny permission unless we absolutely have to. We And that's normally for an override, right? So I want my one particular salesperson to have modify permission to every client except one. So I deny them permission on that particular client file. That would be like the only time you would ever use a deny permission. But Microsoft gives you that capability. Now, let me talk about a couple of other things. I can assign permissions to global groups. I shouldn't. I should assign them to domain local groups. I can add users to domain local groups. I shouldn't, but I can. Microsoft gives you the ability to do things that might be, you know, one-off thing or something very unique. But in general, best practice, users go into global groups. Global groups go into domain local groups. Local groups have rights. And doing that, we can find our data and we can secure access to that information.